اللہ نزل احسن الحدیف کتاب متشابہ کتاب متشابہ مثانیت قشعر من جلود الذین یخشون ربہم ثم تلین جلود ہم و قلوب ہم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ Verily, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has revealed the book upon his servant so that it may be a mercy and a guidance for all of mankind. And may peace and salutations be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As to what follows, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to a new and fascinating series that we're going to do entitled Understanding the Sciences of the Qur'an. And the sciences of the Qur'an is one of the fundamental sciences of our religion. Now, when we say the sciences of the Qur'an, many viewers will think that we're going to talk about physics and chemistry and geology within the Qur'an. But no, this is not what we're referring to. When we say the sciences of the Qur'an, we're not talking about the physical sciences that are mentioned in the Qur'an. Rather, we're talking about the sciences and the knowledges that is needed to understand the Qur'an. So when we say sciences of the Qur'an, or the Arabic equivalent of ulum al-Qur'an, what we're referring to is that branch of knowledge that deals with the recitation, with the history, with the understanding, and with the implementation of the Qur'an. This is what we mean by the sciences of the Qur'an. So it deals with the recitation, the history, the understanding, and the implementation of the Qur'an. In other words, what we're going to do in this series of episodes is to lay out a foundational basis in order to better our understanding of the Qur'an. This is the foundation that we need before we approach a study of the Qur'an. How do we study the Qur'an? What do we need to know about the Qur'an? So for example, when it comes to recitation of the Qur'an, of course the sciences of the Qur'an deals with the proper way of recitation called tajweed. But that is another series of topics and shows how to recite the Qur'an. But there is another topic related to the recitation and that is the various ways that the Qur'an is recited. There are a number of ways, ten to be precise, that have been preserved in our tradition of how to recite the Qur'an. And we will talk about those ways in the course of this series. With regards to the history of the Qur'an, we will talk about the concept of revelation or wahi. And how did the revelation occur? How did the Qur'an come down from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Jibreel? And then from Jibreel to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will also talk about how the Qur'an was recorded and preserved. All Muslims know and they claim and they boast and they have every right to boast that the Qur'an is the preserved, the only preserved and authentic book from God. And this is a correct claim. But then if somebody were to ask you, prove this to me, how was the Qur'an collected? How do we know that the Qur'an we have now is the exact same Qur'an that the Prophet ﷺ recited? Well, many of us would not know that. So in the series of these lectures, inshaAllah ta'ala, we will also discuss the history of the compilation of the Qur'an. And we will also discuss tidbits of how the Qur'an was written down and throughout the centuries how the script of the Qur'an was changed to the modern cursive or the uh, neskhi script that we have in our times. With regards to the understanding and implementation of the Qur'an, then indeed there are so many sciences that every single person should be aware of before he or she embarks upon a proper understanding of the Qur'an. For example, the concept of the causes of revelation called in Arabic asbab al nuzul why was a verse revealed? There is a certain incident sometimes, a certain uh, thing that occurs in Medina, or a person asks a question and Allah responds to it. So by knowing the context of revelation, we can better understand what exactly we are uh, referring to in the Qur'an itself. This is called Asbab al-Nuzul. Uh, other things that help us understand is the time period of revelation. Generally speaking, we have divided uh, the time period of revelation into two categories. Those verses and surahs that were revealed in Mecca, and those verses and surahs that were revealed in Medina. We will talk about why this categorization is so important, and uh, what is the uh, concept of this categorization? Why do we need it to understand the Qur'an? What are the differences between those surahs that came down in Mecca, and those surahs that came down in Medina? 
Additionally, there is the science known as the science of abrogation. In other words, certain rulings, we find them in the Qur'an, but we don't apply them anymore. They have been abrogated. We also find references to verses that used to be in the Qur'an, but no longer form a part of the Qur'an. And when an average Muslim is exposed to these uh, references in, for example, books of history, in uh, hadith literature, they are absolutely confused. Where did this come from? I thought that the Qur'an was exactly the same as the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Of course this is true, but the average Muslim is unaware that the Prophet ﷺ himself wanted certain verses to be removed by the will of Allah. Allah told him that these verses were for a temporary time, for a few years, for the companions to implement. When they implemented it, it was to be taken out. When the average Muslim does not know this then, when they're exposed to this information, they will be greatly confused. Another science that we will also uh, touch upon is the science of how to interpret the Qur'an. No doubt we are all qualified to open the Qur'an and read it, but are we all qualified to interpret it? And the answer is, it depends what do you mean by interpretation. Do you mean to understand it at a very basic level? Then the answer to that is yes. But do you mean to derive rulings and to understand uh, the more obscure references in the Qur'an and to expound upon laws and theology? Then in this case, no. It is completely prohibited for a Muslim to open up the book of Allah and then say, I think Allah means this, and I think Allah means that, and I think this, and I think that. So we will talk about the concept of tafsir. How do we properly understand the Qur'an? We will also touch upon the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. We all claim, and this is a true claim, that the Qur'an is the greatest miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if somebody were to ask you, how is it a miracle? What do you mean it's a miracle? This is just a book like all other books. If a non-Muslim comes and says, this to me is like any other book. What do you mean it is a miracle? You need to explain to him how is it miraculous. And when you explain to him how it is miraculous, then he or she will appreciate, yes, now I see where you're coming from. The content, the laws, the preservation, the recitation, etc., etc. So this is another science uh, of ulum al-Qur'an or of the sciences of the Qur'an that we will be expounding on in this series of lectures. Therefore, we are going to embark upon this journey for a number of reasons. The first and foremost is to appreciate our love of this book. We will appreciate this book, this treasure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Allah says in the Qur'an, say by the blessings of Allah and His mercy, be happy at those rather than what the people amass of money and wealth. Be happy at the fadl and the rahmah of Allah. And the scholars of tafsir said, by the fadl Allah meant the Qur'an, and by the rahmah Allah meant Islam. So Allah is saying, rejoice because of the Qur'an. Be happy because you are Muslims, and don't worry about the material possessions that the rest of mankind uh, go over lustfully and are eager to amass and hoard. You, O Muslim, should be proud of your book. You should be proud of your civilization. You should be proud of your culture. You should be proud of all that Allah has given you. And of the best things that Allah has given you is this holy book, the Qur'an. So then we will appreciate the sanctity and the holiness of this book when we study the sciences of the Qur'an. Another reason why we should study the Qur'an is because it will help us increase in our knowledge. Some of the scholars of the past said, only when you study what you don't know and you learn something new, will you appreciate how ignorant you were before you knew. In other words, ignorance is increased as you increase your knowledge. And I know that sounds paradoxical, but think about it. Suppose you had no idea that there's a science called physics. You didn't even know it existed. And then you attended an introductory level course in physics, just a few hours. And the professor gave you all of these equations and all of these concepts, and you were exposed to a science you never knew existed. And it was clear that this, there is much more to this science than this one introductory lecture. You will appreciate your own ignorance as you increase your knowledge in physics. It is like a whole new window has been opened and you are just looking outside the window and you see this entire vast land. You haven't been there, you haven't explored it, but you know it exists. Hence, by studying the sciences of the Qur'an, we increase in our awareness of uh, the, the, the ignorance that we have. We increase in our appreciation of the sciences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and these sciences help us to better understand the Qur'an. Another reason why we should study the sciences of the Qur'an 
is because as Muslims, especially in the time and place that we're living in, we find that our religion is under attack. Materially, spiritually, it is under attack by every single means possible. Intellectually, by, by, by physical armies coming and invading our lands, every single facet that is possible to be attacked from, we find people are attacking our religion. So we as average Muslims living in countries all over the world, our defense, generally speaking, is going to be intellectual. Our defense is going to be verbal. We will defend our religion as best as we can by showing the true faith that it is. So if somebody comes and ridicules the Qur'an, or claims that the Qur'an is not a book of God, or says this or that, then it is your job as Muslims to stand up and defend Islam if you are qualified to do so. How will you be qualified to do so when you are not aware of your own religion? So, by studying the sciences of the Qur'an, you will increase in your knowledge of this book, you will understand where and how people can try to find flaws, and you will know that these are not flaws when you understand it properly. In other words, if you study the sciences of the Qur'an, you will be able to defend the Qur'an from attacks against those who do not believe in it. From those who try to find faults and doubts within the Qur'an, if you don't know the Qur'an, how will you possibly defend it? Therefore, for all of these reasons and even more, really and truly, this is one of the most important sciences of Islam. It increases our attachment to this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It causes us to appreciate uh, the blessings that Allah has given us. It allows us to defend the Qur'an against those who deny and reject it. And it makes us better Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, Kitabun أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُ آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ This is a book that we have revealed to you. It is blessed. It is Mubarak. Mubarak means it in and of itself is blessed. Its recitation brings you blessings. Believing in it brings you blessings. Acting upon it brings you blessings. Memorizing it brings you blessings. Its very presence is a type of blessing. Everything about the Qur'an is blessed because the Qur'an is from Allah. The Qur'an is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, reciting it and believing in it and defending it is indeed a part of our religion. So Allah says, مُبَارَكٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُ آيَاتِهِ We have revealed this blessed book so that you can ponder over its signs. You can ponder over its verses. You can contemplate the revelation, the history, the context, the, the recitation. You can contemplate this book. وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ And so that a people of intelligence will learn and will gain in their knowledge and their uh, iman. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the topic of Ulum al-Qur'an. This is the topic of the sciences of the Qur'an. And briefly before we conclude, what exactly is the history of Ulum al-Qur'an? Who started it? Who initiated it? And who uh, compiled books on it? Very briefly, the sciences of Islam, all of them, they began with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the sciences of Islam obviously began with him. And we find that when the companions were faced with uh, something that they did not know, they would ask the Prophet ﷺ to explain things to them. So when there was a verse they didn't understand, when there was a issue that was confusing to them, they would go to the Prophet ﷺ and they would get guidance from him. One example of this, Allah says in the Qur'an, those who believe and don't do any injustice, they are going to be the ones who are saved and the ones who are rightly guided. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِمَانَهُمْ بِظُلْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْنُ وَهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ So the Sahaba asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who amongst us does not do any injustice? We all do sins. The Prophet sallallahu explained, the meaning of injustice in this verse is to worship other than Allah. So the initiator of all sciences, including ulum al-Qur'an, was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but various scholars and various books were written throughout the centuries, and insha'Allah ta'ala, in the course of our future episodes, we will talk more about this and about other sciences. I hope to see you in our next episode. Until then, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. الله نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها كتابا متشابها مثانية تقشعر منه جلود الذين يخشون ربهم ثم 
مَتَلِينُ جُلُودُهُمْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ إِلَى ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ